So now let's get started and talk a little bit about those key point curves. I'm going to create a new layer. Call this profiles and I go to curves. You know at this point already what a CV curve is and also what an EP, like a control vertex curve and an edit point curve is. And here, this icon, when you click it, that actually opens the key point curve toolbox. So what are these tools? Technically speaking, those are very basic drawing aids. They come from the cat area. And essentially, those are nothing else than just curve tools, but they have interactive elements to it. So for example, when I select the line tool and I am in front view. Also, before you start working, uh, I would not recommend creating key point curves while you're in perspective view, even when you're in, uh, for example, the left view and set it to orthographic. I noticed that those can be difficult to use when you're in the perspective view. I would just go right ahead to the dedicated front view. So let's go back to this line. If I click a point, you see there is a white line. That's my first starting point. And now I click a second time. That is my last point. And what do we see here now? So there is like a line starting point, a midpoint, an end point, and two white lines here. Those are actually guides. So when I click, for example, on this point, the drag tool is the, the move tool to move those blue points or modify or manipulate a line. And then I can click it. You can see how I can move, for example, the start and the end point. I can also click the middle point and for example, this way you see I change the midpoint and automatically the other point will be adjusted. And in, in a sense, this is actually nothing else than a curve tool that is interactively created inside. However, instead of then manipulating it through the CV points, you just have a start and an end point. If you click on the line command and keep it dragged, you can see, for example, you can create a parallel line or a zigzag line, or you can create a line on an angle. So here is kind of like the line. And then I can create another curve on this line, for example, at 50 degree. Those guidelines can at one point become actually very annoying so you can just easily delete them and then for example here I create another line you could also simply click your first point and then type in let's say 90 so now you see there is kind of like a a 90 degree perpendicular construction line and if I then click I can position the last point and delete guides let's delete those let's go to line again and I'm going to sketch a line just with using the grid so it's horizontal and you could, for example, create an arc that is, uh, for example, tangent here, an arc tangent to a line. So then I can click on this line and either go to the start, somewhere in the middle or the end. And let's say I go to the end and then click a second time. Now you can see that I'm creating an arc that emerges from that line with a tangent continuity.
and at this point maybe you can see if I would have to do this with my curve tools that's of course possible but it will require a lot more work and it will not be as uh, properly not as precise by just using a dedicated tool now you also have for example the ability to create a line that is let's say perpendicular to a ring or a curve in this case so let's say maybe perpendicular and I can click a position on a curve and click and there for example now is a line that is created perpendicular to that curve let's create another ring maybe here and I would like a line to be created that is tangent to both curves or circles so I could click maybe somewhere here and maybe I have to guess a little bit maybe somewhere here and then as you can see that line is then drawn and Alias will draw it so that it's really perfectly tangent so where I necessarily click might not really where the curve will be created Let's make another try, maybe here and here. There you see I clicked here, but then alias put the point to there. 